Let's rock. If you're new to the tribe, Rad is across the table, Rich is behind the mix, and my name is Yanni Gormaster. We are Unity Gym, experts at turning driven people into athletes. This episode is brought to you by the Unify Movement System, the online program that balances strength, flexibility, and fitness in an efficient 60-minute workout so you can unleash your inner athlete. Get daily coaching by us, plus our epic gym and home UMS programs, extensive exercise library, private coaching group, and weekly coaching calls. As a valued listener, use the link in the description to get your first month free. Quickly, before we get started, I always love to give a big shout out to everyone watching on the Unity Gym YouTube channel. Remember, hit that like button. The more likes we get, the more awesome people get to see this content. And always subscribe if you like what you see. I'm super excited to announce that joining us today, we have Aaron McKenzie from Origin of Energy and Phil White from ADPT Physio. Uh, and for those of you guys that didn't know, Aaron started work in the fitness industry in 1998, first as a martial artist, then moving into face-to-face personal training, and then small group training. Now he splits his time running Origin of Energy, both face-to-face and online, where he specializes in movement and lifestyle coaching. Aaron's managed his own gym in Bondi, coached professional athletes, taught international workshops and certified personal trainers with his own education courses. And it's uh, it's funny when I read that out because Aaron and I were living together in 1998. We uh, He's one of my oldest friends and we moved out of home together. We were living in um, Harris, we were, Street. Harris Street in <laughs> Ultimo and then we moved to Paddington shortly after that in 1999. I remember the reason why you two moved to Paddington. Yeah. We all went for lunch one day yeah, in right. Paddington. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And after about 15 minutes, we all looked at each other and said, there is a lot of really attractive women. That's, that's exactly why we moved there. Aaron and me. And we went straight we're, to the real estate agent. Yeah, remember, remember, and remember we were moving and Mick wanted to move with us. And yeah. he goes, I can't get a car park in Paddington. And we said, well, too bad. Yeah, we're going to go to Paddington. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, awesome. anyway, good times. But um, Aaron is uh, Aaron and I have trained together for decades now, and um, Aaron's always been more flexible than I have, and he's been somebody better looking. slightly better looking. But he's been somebody that's taught me a lot about flexibility. You definitely taught me the um, the breakthrough lessons for uh, things like compression, strength, to nail my press to handstand and stuff. So when we had some questions come through from our tribe about flexibility. Yanni looked at me and said, let's get Aaron on the show. He can help us yeah, answer we, the questions. We, so. got, we got like four or five questions that came in and a bunch of them I just said we have to get Azza on. And and yeah. quick little plug here, Aaron, anyone who's bought our 18 minute stretching routine, yep. I've told this story a, a number of times in the emails that I send out. That came off the birth of us going and doing a session with Azza when, yeah, it was. like eight years ago. Um, so you were there for that. It yep. would have been just after we opened Unity Gym. We so it would, have, it, it would have been 2013. Yeah. Um, and we all went over to your gym and you, you you took us through a session. And that was the first time that Yanni and I, with all of the way that we write our programs, where we did this um, movement style warm up, you know, that wasn't mm-hmm. just this dicky little bend down and touch your toes type warm up. And we and everything that we got out of that session that we did with you, when we came back, we both we said, both just we, 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 like, we felt really good. And we said, we need to create a warm-up routine for our program and it was um that the warm-up routine that evolved into what we now call the 18 minute stretching routine was modeled off what we did with you that day yeah, with that, yeah. that warm-up absolutely so, so to say he's had an impact on our training would be an understatement now i want to dive straight into this because because our time is limited yeah. um aaron's a very busy guy he's quite famous on the um eastern suburbs and his uh, russian wife will kill him yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> the real, that's, real, that's the real problem yeah. <laughs> so we've, we're actually going to condense three questions into one uh episode today the, the first comes from helen madge from the ums online coaching group she asks what is the best method for improving flexibility is it static or active stretching, um, i.e., and why? The second question comes from Helen again, uh, which she, she asks, what's the best intensity and frequency for stretching and can you overstretch? And then the last of these three come, comes from Bronwyn Brown from the UMS Movement Mastermind Group. And Bronwyn has asked, does age affect your ability to get flexible and why? So let's kick this one off with what do we think is the best method for flexibility? Well, I, and, I want to hear uh, what Aaron's got to say about that. I don't care what I think. I want to know what Aaron thinks. <laughs> and we'll throw, it, we'll throw it over to Aaron. That's right. And we've, uh, we, we've got um, yeah, we've got four very, very uh, insightful and, and clever people who have got a bit of skin in the game around the table here. So let's go. Yeah. Strengthening. That's it. Strengthening. Yeah. Just get strong at that end range. I love, I love that Just you said get that. Strong there. Yeah. If you're strong there, you can go there. Yeah. That's it. We, and this is what we say all the time. True flexibility cannot be achieved in the absence of strength. And what we mean by that is that the, 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 you know, the, the 
Flexibility adaptation is an adaptation of the brain, unlike what most people sort of think, the notion that it's just about lengthening the muscle body itself. Mm -hmm. The muscle body is is able to go uh, elongate. Uh, yeah. You know, if you were to Phil's used this analogy a number of times, if you were put to sleep like on the um, on the operating table, you'd be the most flexible person. You know, you'd be able to bend and move around yeah. and this and that. Your body kind of goes like limp. You know, it's the brain's inhibitor in, in inhibition because of lack of stability and strength that restricts movement. And a really great example of that is when you know when you stand vertically you most likely if you're a remotely capable person be able to lift one leg to a 90 degree angle mm -hmm. and then if you were to do the same on the other side you'd be able to mimic that movement and no, there's nothing joining uh, your left limb to your right limb in your lower extremity so why can't you do the splits mm -hmm. because your brain doesn't allow you to except mm -hmm. if you're Aaron mm -hmm. um and yeah so I think that's a really really great way to to yeah. frame it yeah. you know i guess the the challenge because I, I i know that it was the challenge for me as well mm. to the learning to get to where i am now with my understanding mm. of um of end brain strength and things like that it's really just understanding how to strengthen your body in those end ranges and yeah. there is a lot of confusion oh, yeah, yeah. for the average person with that they, they just don't get it they don't understand yeah. what it is and it's funny because the further you go down the rabbit hole of learning this stuff when you're a coach like we are there comes a time when it just becomes really simple. It's, yeah, it's yeah. really easy. Yeah. Just take your joint to the end range yeah. and figure out ways to strengthen it. But yeah. And load it. And most of the time when you post a picture of yourself doing that at that level, you get absolutely slammed on social media. You can be like, oh, that's so bad for your back. Or that's yeah. so yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Or, you yeah. know, you should never do that, you know. <laughs> and we've, got, we've just had so many back and forth arguments with people when we've posted a loaded jefferson curl or yeah. a, uh, a loaded hamstring curl or something like that you know aaron um not i shouldn't say all the time but i've seen you post many times a body weight jefferson curl you yeah, you'll yeah. hold uh, 40 kilos in each hand and yeah, yeah, jefferson kilo, curl. Yeah. yeah yeah i've um i've never got that high i've gotten to probably about 60 kilos or so and then i yeah, got just, bored and started just, doing yeah, other just things. Just explain for the for the uh, for everyone playing at home what that actually means. Like, yeah. what's a eighty kilo Jefferson? So, curl a, like? well, well, a Jefferson curl is when you stand up straight and you you're holding With, weights in your hands and you and you intentionally go through as much flexion of the spine, trying to articulate each. Uh, vertebra the whole way down or each section of the spine so you start with your chin then your upper back and Brian, when you're back. editing this dig out a video yeah. of Azza from his instagram yeah. and, <laughs> um, and so aaron doing his uh he, he's he's doing a jefferson curl with his own body weight and of course yeah. the devil isn't in the movement right the devil's in the way you got there yeah you know like anybody that's going to watch this and go i'm going to go and try and, and yeah. a, a body weight jefferson curl you're probably going to wreck yourself yeah and, and, yeah you've got to strengthen the whole chain and yeah. while we're on this let's get the physio's perspective of what mm. is the most important thing when someone sees that video because we're going to get the b-roll overlay yeah. what do you what, what should you do if you're just getting started i mean the body's just so the brain particularly is really good at just protecting your body from things that it's, it doesn't feel confident with so your body will adapt to what you're spending your time doing but there's going to be a certain threshold with every sort of movement every type of loading that if you exceed that too quickly then um, you know, and the instructor's not prepared for it, then you're not going to end well. Um, but yeah, so much with flexibility is about teaching your brain that that movement, that particular movement is safe. So it's, it's all about just progressively doing it and having it in the context. And I think that's why working with trainers and having someone who can guide you through it is going to be um, so important because it's partly that physical mm -hmm. adaptation, but so much of it is just that mental adaptation to, to trust that your body can handle it and then get good, um, good uh, advice about how to recover as well. Remember mm -hmm. with Adaptation, it's stimulus and recovery, stimulus and recovery. Yeah, it's, but yeah, particularly with, um, sorry. Go. No, no, I was going to, I was going to say, cause this is what we always sort of combat any um, negativity on social media when we post videos and pictures like that is, you know, that's so dangerous. And I, I, I always like to say, you know, so is what the guys do at the CrossFit games. And so is what anyone does on an NRL, NRL field or, you know, well, even a basketball gymnast game. At the Olympics, gymnast like, at the Olympics. Like, yeah. It's all bloody dangerous if you can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's just a condition response. Exactly. Yeah. And it, the lesson in the podcast is that it's not high load, it's how you get there. Like that's yeah. exactly what we're talking about. And remember load here can mean um, weight or it can mean range of motion or it can mean a combination of, you know, all of the different loading variables we yeah. talk about. So, yeah, but your body is, is amazing at, at, at dealing with what you spend your time doing. So yeah. just, in, in, in just before we came on, we uh, the boys did a 30 minute sort of um, workout and there was a great discussion on the concept of the time frame that it takes to achieve the levels of things that you would likely see on someone's Instagram feed, you know, 
or or YouTube channel. Um, you know, people don't generally post the work; they they post what they've achieved by doing the work. Mm. You know, and so people then sort of we've got this 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 mentality that you you made a comment about. Everyone wants it now, now, now. It's the afterpay generation. You know. Mm get it now and worry about paying for it later <laughs> act now apologize later yeah. <laughs> that's right you know i think but i think that's really relevant when you, when yeah. you're training especially for flexibility yeah. you know because flexibility i think beyond strength i think is a it's not it's less linear mm -hmm. to achieve you know you can you can design a really great strength program and and uh, you know as long as you come in and you lift a little bit more weight it's very tangible you know you, you last week you were lifting the 10 kilo dumbbells this week you're lifting 12s and you your brain goes ah i can feel and see and make and, and it's tangible the progression mm -hmm. whereas with flexibility it's not so much mm -hmm. and there's so much that comes into play there like previous history, you know, what your background is, how strong you are, you know, mm. already, like if you, uh, and, and it can be really, really frustrating. And, mm. and a lot of people, their answer to that is, I'll just push harder. I'll just yeah. do it more, you know, and I guess that's a good segue into the next question from Helen Madge. What's the best intensity and frequency for stretching and can you overstretch? And can, I, can I just start off with this? Sorry. Mm -hmm. you no, I was just going to say, I think that before we even go there, which you can, which you can start on, it's important to clarify what it is that Aaron said, because um, I think uh, I, I very rarely use the word stretching and I don't really hear Aaron use it mm -hmm. that much either. Um, I think it's important to say that we don't really do what people call stretching. Like what we were doing when we were sitting on the ground and you're just sitting there, some people might call stretching, but that's really just kind of sitting there and warming, warming up. up. But yeah. it's it's more flexibility training and flexibility training really is, as Aaron said, it's strength training, but it's it's strength training through range and it's strength training at end ranges using lots of different things like isometric contractions, eccentrics, um, you know, antagonist activation, yeah. things like that. Um, and that's a, not a short, like if anybody says, well, how do you do it? That's not a short answer. There's so many different ways yeah. to do it. And there's different ways for different joints and different movements and everything. But yeah, yeah. I saw, I actually saw, a, I, I, it could have been one of my friends on social media wrote a post about this the other day and he said, stretching is something that unflexible people do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> flexibility training like is something it. that people do if they want to actually get uh, more mobile, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a kind of a good way of putting it. Like you, you see people in the in the gym who are really unfit and incapable of stretching. You mm -hmm. know? Can I jump into my rant here? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that really gets me, and this is related to that that question of um, can you overstretch? And it, it's this cultural idea that with all injuries that stretching is this magical cure all. Like every time I have first come in um, a, a physio appointment, they've got an injury and they're like. Oh yeah, you know I've got this, and you know I'm probably just not not stretching enough, not stretching enough. Like it's it's always the first go to thing that they assume is why they've become injured, and so they don't look at like the kind of big lifestyle factors. They don't look at like macro programming. They don't think about how they've done the exercise at all. It's always like ah, oh, it's because I I feel guilty for not stretching enough, and it's like, <laughs> and I think you know flexibility is a, a wonderful thing. I'm not a particularly flexible person because it's not as relevant for my particular uh, movement goals. But I think you know the pursuit of flexibility training is great. But just like with every exercise, like it's all about dosage and enough of the right stimulus is good and too much of any exercise at a hot, too much of an intensity is going to be is going to be damaging. And people don't really understand that um, flexibility is like a load that you have to adapt to. And for people who kind of come in and they're injured, they like just assume that it's got yeah. some magical property of healing. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it, it and, in that, and in many cases, when you see someone who says that, exact statement it's the lack of strength that's getting yes, them yeah, yeah. to their problems yeah, you know, lack of stability lack of strength yeah. so let's let aaron answer how much stretching and how intense should it be and let's clarify not stretching but flexibility yeah. training so well look it just depends on how much time they have you know how, how much time have you got to commit to yourself to work on these things and how relevant is it for you so a lot of the clients that i have that you know they, they can only commit say five minutes a day this mobility training is really their strength training Mm. Uh, you know, unless they've got a specific uh, imbalance or an instability that they need to work on or something, a restriction that is more isolated. But otherwise, like for the majority of my clients, all I'm working on is like pull up overhead press, um, horizontal pull, like bent row, push up, squat, lunge, bend. Mm. Um, and if they can do those well through a full range of motion, they've pretty much got the mobility that they need and they're all 
counterposed, you know, like if you're pulling this way and pushing this way, you're pulling this way and you're pushing this way. Like if you've got strength there and you can do a dead hang pull up and you can press overhead into that position, then your shoulder's going to be fairly balanced um, in terms of that pulling and pushing balance. And then horizontally, if you can pull and push through a full range of motion in that way, and the muscles are going to, you're going to have that even cellular balance. So the recruitment patterns on both sides of the joints are going to be in, in a way that you've got that agonist antagonist balance where you can keep building strength. And usually when someone's hit a plateau in strength, it's because they've got an imbalance of strength. If they're too strong on one side of the joint. So every time you load the joint, it pulls to one side because that stronger muscle is trying to stabilize now. And even though it's not the one that you're trying to lift with, it's just trying to hold the joint together. So the joint feels like something's going to give. So it just it shuts you down. It's yeah. not going to let you jo go there. Joints work in systems and if and the body's really good at, oh, at, yeah. at basically co-contracting and yeah. being like, nope. And it's that <laughs> simple thing, it. you know, optimal instantaneous yeah. axis of rotation. So every joint should have equal and opposing, you know, stability on all sides. And if it's got that, it'll get stronger. We if it does have that, it's going to go. We did a podcast just the other day. We recorded a podcast the other day with um, Sebastian Oreb, who's a you know, powerlifting coach, mm. mo mostly. But he even commented saying, you know, nine times out of 10, when I get someone come to me who can already do a 220 kilo bench press and they say, how can I get stronger? I can't get any stronger. He goes, the chances, nine times out of 10, it's not do more bench. No, it's yeah, you've got to do the, the, oppo opposing, the opposing muscle. Yeah, that's exactly. how they're going to get stronger. And he, that's all he does and people are a bit weirded out. And then yeah, they it's go like Now they've got a better bench. foundation. Exactly. Because yeah. now they've got something to, to balance it with. Yeah. Because your body will just shut down. It's like, no, you're not getting more strength on that side. What are you yeah. kidding? Yeah. And it's the same with mobility. If you're really flexible on one side, like why would it go further the other way if it's tight on one side? Like it's, yeah. you've got to have that equal and opposing strength and equal and opposing range of motion. Um, and, and that's that's where coming back to the question, you know, like how much time, you know, how much time have you got and what, what are your goals and what do you want to do with it? Like yeah. how, how is it going to serve you? Um, so in terms of, you know, like I like, like you guys, like I just have our classes with clients, you know, and they can come once to seven times a week or whatever. So, um, and in that session, you know, we're just doing foam rolling, bit of mobility work, massage ball, mobility routine. That's the session. And then they're just doing compound movement patterns and depending on how often they're training and how many days in a row they're training, you know, you shift those things. But, you know, as if you can commit 10 minutes a day, you can make massive changes. But there's the two most like valuable things, you know, the dead hang, uh, for the shoulders and just traction that joint and whatever level that works for you and deep squatting like if you if you can choose two things and then obviously a deep lunge as well to get the hip flexors balanced out in the hips like those things if you can just be healthy and strong in those positions and just do them every day that they pay off hugely but even that's somewhat limited because obviously once you get to a certain point you just you're not going to go any further because you're not getting that opposing pressing strength and you're getting the opposing you know, like for a squat, you're, you're going into hip flexion, so you've got to get that hip flexor strength in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, 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 you know, you can do it very simply um, or you can make it like me. It's, it's a lifestyle. It's something I do every day and I'm doing every day, but you don't have to. Yeah, I really like what you said just before we came in when you're out on the gym floor about how you do, you try and touch each of the like yeah, different the things... types of, of like stimulus for your body throughout the week. And I think that's yeah. a really important thing to understand for Helen where like, you know, it might take a certain amount of, um, work to get to um, a certain level of flexibility or strength mm -hmm. but um, as we talked a lot about before with strength maintenance like it is often like you just need to do a little bit but like consistently, consistently. and that consistency is what kills yeah. people is they just yeah. like yeah. they train hard for sprints There's, and then your body adapts over yeah, time and it's going to mold around yeah. that and then you know everything yeah. else will fall apart so yeah you've got to be able to touch on it every week and I, I always try and get clients to work with a weekly checklist so like a lot of my online clients are like you know I just want this set program tell me exactly what I have to do it's like you know, what are your goals? Okay, here is a checklist to get to those goals. How these things go together is really up to you because I need to know, like, I, I'm not in your body. Like, I don't know how you feel every day, how you wake up, you know, in your body. And if you wake up feeling good, then it's, you're going to be able to train harder. But if you wake up feeling bad and my program says you have to do this and you injure yourself, that's a bad program, man. And that's not what you want to stick to. You want to learn how to work with that weekly checklist. So, what is your turnaround on squats? Do you need 48 hours recovery? Do you need, you know, 72 hours recovery before you can actually have a decent attempt at it again? And on all your mobility gains are strength gains. So if I, you know, if I improve my side split or my overhead position or my front split or my pancake, it's because I've just gotten that little bit stronger at that end range. And now it's easier for me to go there. And it's not just being able to, like you said, you know, someone you can knock them out, put them on a table and then stretch them. 
um, because you've got to have control there. So you've got to be able to use it. And that's like, you know, we've gone through like the Presta handstand is a, a perfect example of something that um, if you do it, attack it with a pull push legs approach, that movement becomes so much easier and it becomes attainable. So what I mean is that like, if you're doing a hang off a bar and then doing the side straddle and then raising up into that pike, then that's the position in reverse, but a pull version and the push version is the actual drill that you're doing for the press to handstand and the leg version would be that pancake going down and going through that position. But you've got that cellular balance from all sides of the joints and loading them both ways. So you've made it strong in terms of the hip flexors on one side, strong in terms of the glutes and the abductors, adductors, every, every angle is kind of covered by a, a pull press uh, leg approach to mobility. And it, it seems weird, but it's just that cellular loading coming from all angles. Um, with any movement and opposing it as opposed to just doing the one movement by itself and hoping it, it works out. Well, that's exactly what we did to get our press to handstand, yeah. yep. which, um, because I don't know if you remember, but when I was trying to learn a press mm -hmm. to handstand, I was coming to you going, I don't even get how you do it. Like I can't even put weight in my yeah, hands. Yeah. And you just, you explained that to me, you know, get strong hanging and getting your legs up to the bar, use straddles yep. and then go down and express it with a push and do it yep. all this. And that's how I got my press to handstand from following that approach and yeah. which led to our press to handstand um, program that we've trained people in around yeah, the world. Yeah. But I think if we talk about the, the dosage and the intensity, because everything that you've said is, uh, is spot on with what we do and what we believe. But if we talk about like somebody like Helen, who mm -hmm. is, she's one of our members who, when you see her, she's awesome. She's a really she's high it. achiever. She's into it. She's got a really good body composition. She's a strong person. She's done a lot of movement in the past. Yeah. She commits to five, six days a week. Um, I, again, uh, for anybody that's listening, Aaron's had a major impact on the way that we do things because I've, I've watched so much of what he does on Instagram. I've trained with him so much over the years. I've asked him so many questions. And um, it's really for the flexibility that we do in the UMS, the, the biggest influences have been Aaron and Joachim Hildeson, the guy that I, you know, Joachim yeah, yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. I trained with him online for yeah, about cool. a year. He came over here and did a workshop with us. I would and say Ian King had a huge influence, but yeah. that was only because he made it really clear that we needed to stretch a lot more. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. He didn't that's necessarily true. teach us how to but do if it, you yeah. think, but, but if he but cracked if, the eye. He so influence, yes, but yeah. if you think about time spent with yeah, a person, yeah, yeah. it's really Aaron and Joachim that I spent the time with. Yeah. And what, what it's led to with our program is it's this way that we touch all the major movements like front splits, pike, middle splits, um, hmm. flexion, extension, external yeah. rotation, internal rotation. So all the major movements of the joints once a week, yeah. but we do a bit of volume on it. Yeah, and yeah. it's always about strength. It's always yeah. either isometrics, eccentrics, or end range strength. Yeah. Um, and from my understanding is that's similar to what you do. Like mm -hmm. I've seen you talk about how you basically... Um, you'll do each position once a week where you do it yep. loaded and, uh, and then and just... you might, you might vary that. So like if you're building to strength, you know, you might do a spectrum of reps and loading variables, for example, like you're doing he your heavier strength, like just pure strength work. Yep. And then you're doing a higher, um, volume, uh, that's kind of not quite strength endurance, but you know, it's heading that way out of hypertrophy, out of muscular development. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you're getting that spectrum, like you're not leaving anything off the table. So, for example, if you just get your body to adapt to three to five reps in everything you do, what happens outside of that? You get weak. Um, and if, but if you just do endurance work all the time, what happens when you start to put really heavy load in that structure? Um, it just doesn't, that the fiber types have been left unconditioned. So my approach is, you know, like as you, as you become more well-rounded is to stimulate all those different conditioning responses, even within a week. You know, like you have these programs where people go, oh, I'm just doing heavy strength work now for a month then I'm just gonna do you know, this range for a month and then I'll just do this for a month. And that can work um, for a specific goal, but you've always gotta remember that as soon as you focus too much on one thing, you're letting go of something else. So if you wanna try and maintain, it doesn't mean you have to have high volume in everything, but you at least touch on it. So for example, if you're doing pull-ups and you are in a phase of where you're doing more volume or you're doing you know, like you're in a hypertrophy phase, you might still chuck a couple of heavy rep, you know, like singles, doubles, triples, whatever in there, just to maintain that ability in the muscle to fire in that way and to recruit those fiber types. Because when it comes down to mobility, it's, it's not just the tissue range of motion, it's a tissue range of motion in terms of the, all those fiber types responding to those positions. 
And when people get injured, it's not because they can't necessarily do that range. They just mightn't have the right fiber type strength in that range. So they might be they might be able to do it really slow and controlled, but then the second they go and play sport where it's an explosive movement and they're having to recruit those fiber types in that range, then they're in trouble because they, they haven't conditioned it. So you know, like if you really want the range to, it's all about how the range feels, not just you know, like yeah. you know, you could do a slow warm up and get yourself into this position, but then you know, if you're an athlete or if you want to be able to perform or you want to be able to kind of express that on a on a more regular basis. Then you've it's got to be strong there in terms of it just feeling good all the time. Um, it's interesting you say that. When I first worked with Ben Pakolsky, who was a, a professional bodybuilder, uh, sort of retired from bodybuilding now, mm. he said the same thing. Uh, he did. I asked him about program splitting and things like that, and he said, "Ah, oh, look, towards the, the more, more recently, I've gone to you know doing different rep ranges each day yeah. on different body parts because I find that it just maintains everything much better." But yeah. he was at a Elite, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so, and I think when you're younger, you can tolerate a lot more like heavy conditioning in one way. Yeah, but I think as you get older, you've got to try and keep everything alive. You know, you've got the three things that happen after 35. One, it's easy to get injured. Two, it's harder to get results. And three, you condition decondition I you were faster. Say three, it's harder to get laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> but but um, you know, it's those three compounding factors. So if you don't have something in your routine regularly, you're going to decondition that very quickly. And you're now you're more vulnerable to injury. So if you don't stay conditioned and then you're not as alert, not as, you know, like uh, in your recovery is not as quick. Like it, it's just, this is what happens. This is why you see the dad bod out there. It's we, because they go and play a weekend game of sport, they're deconditioned and they get injured. And now it's like, well, and, and then they're, repertoire of what they can include in their week it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller to the point they just give in which is a great segue for bronwyn brown's question which is the last question to tackle today does age affect your ability to get flexible and why well it definitely does you know in in, in terms of what i just said yeah. um it's really those three factors that are going to limit you uh and if you don't respect them you're going to get into trouble so you have to work with them. You have to learn how to listen to the body. You have to manage that recovery. So, you know, that's why to me, like if you're going to train, like do the whole lifestyle, get to bed on to it. I'm, yeah. you know, eat good food, stay hydrated, create loving relationships around you, express that love to the people that you, that you care about, that you really want to know that uh, they have that connection as well for them. And you build that into your daily life. You'll feel more relaxed. Look after your finances. Don't get yourself into a position where you're stressed about money. Yeah. And then the training works. Yeah. Stress, is, it, stress as you age is kind of like money. It, 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 if you invest it right, it compounds. It's, yeah. Whereas with, with age, it, it, the stress compounds <laughs> on your body <laughs> and, uh, and things have a larger impact. And that's what I would say uh, to everyone out there training over the age of sort of 35. The warm ups matter yeah, yeah. a lot more. A lot more. A lot a lot more. more. Like you I used to, to watch people warm up and see, oh, you know, like. Oh, Come so on, just get on with it, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, yeah. I'll just take the time because it's yeah. just not worth having a little twinge. Yeah, like a little true. twinge just costs you a workout. And, it, and just the feeling, like once you've had a, a couple of decent injuries in your body yeah. and you get, you get one of those like, oh, and you know what it means. And you know, like you just feel this like, oh, yeah. like, oh my God, yeah. unless it's going to take me a week to get over this or longer yeah. or... You know, I'm gonna, my neck's going to be tight, I, my back's going to be tight for a couple of days because I felt that little twin. I, but then if you warm up, yeah. you know, and you just take the time and you, and you are like, and the value of doing strength training, like bodybuilding style training through a full range of motion, man, I, it, that is the most valuable thing. Yeah. Like slow, controlled movements through a full range of motion and just progressively getting stronger, man, that pays off. Like that, if, you know, like my tool for conditioning people that is it like yeah. there. And even if you didn't have time to do a full warm up, you just do your warm up would be really light sets of those movements through a full range of motion, really let the blood supply getting in there, feeling good, getting tissue activation, and then gradually increasing that intensity works so well with yeah. low risk movements, you know, whereas you've just trying too hard to do extreme things too quickly. Yeah. And that's the same like people with, with mobility stuff, you know, people want to get to that extreme range and they just push it too hard and they're just not ready yet. Yeah. And they're not doing the counter poses to it. So if you're doing heavy end range flexion in the spine in a Jefferson, you better have extension strength there to be able to handle it. Yeah. Um, and if it's not there, it's only going to end in 
joint instability Yeah, because you're just trying to get one side of the joint too strong there's, or too mobile. There's no shortcuts. No. And the other, th the other two things I would say for anyone training over 35, trying to achieve um, high levels of flexibility, consider all of the different stress mechanisms in your, in your, in your life, you yeah. know, uh, because they have a really big effect on you and your body at that state. So if you're not sleeping, you said it before, yeah. if you're not recovering properly, if you're not eating right, if you're really, really stressed through emotional, like work related, career yeah, finances yeah. relationship that's going to have a major impact what was it that tony was saying that he does in, uh, with his um clients heart rate variability. he does yeah, heart rate, rate variability, variability yeah. every day to make sure that people yeah. are on point and ready to take on a big session otherwise they do a light session yeah, yeah. you got to listen to your body a lot more as you get and, older and, that, and that's a key thing like training is really about knowing what to do on the day yeah that's you know? right and and like i i try and encourage people to do stuff every day but do what's right on that day um because like, like I said, you, as you get older, you decondition faster. So you've got to be consistent. But you've got to be consistent with something that's not going to hurt you. And like you said about recovery, your training is only as good as your recovery. If you can't recover from it, there's no point in doing it. Yeah. Because uh, it's only all it is is just self mutilation. Yeah. And it's pretty simple. You know, it's it, you know, you've got to be responsible. Like you've got to be able to respond to that stress. And if you're doing all the right things, eating well, relaxing, chilling out, looking after yourself, then Training works, yeah. you know, but if you're just focused on the actual physical part of stretching and just overdoing that, but ignoring everything else, it, it, it can't work. You know, the body is an integrated system. Yeah, they work, like we, we've talked about the negative spirals and positive spirals. Like when, you know, you do get an injury in this, as a physio, this is what yeah. I'm always trying to do is stop that downward spiral of, you know, then, yeah. you, you know, you're not as active, you don't sleep as well, you don't eat yeah, as well. You don't wanna, so it's like, yeah, it's, it's all about trying to put the brakes on that. And I really like your approach there of, you know, you having that big checklist so you don't get so focused on yeah. like just that one thing. Because when people have an injury, they're just so focused yeah. on, oh, I can't do that that goal that I was working on. Yeah. It's like, well, what about the yeah. other? Like, exactly. You know, <laughs> the rest and of that, your that's, life. You know, yeah. like uh, probably my career is built on rebuilding um, people. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and if I've had any kind of claim to fame, it's been working with elite level athletes that are highly broken um, and helping them understand how they can get back on track. Now, and, and the key thing is, you know, like stop focusing on what you can't do. Yeah. Yeah. What Aaron, else life awesome. has to offer? It's, Thanks so much for uh, yeah. for joining us again, Aaron. It's always a pleasure to have you yeah. on here, bro. And we uh, will definitely get you on the show again in the future. For anybody listening who wants to uh, connect with Aaron, Aaron can be found on Instagram at Origin of Energy. But honestly, some of the most inspiring stuff that I find on Instagram, uh, his views Even on... just because half of his training and videos are done in his Speedos. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I just no, like this. He's an amazing guy. And if you if you want to book for an in-person or on an in-person session with Aaron over at Bondi or an online session with Aaron, you can go to originofenergy.com. And I cannot... Uh, I cannot impress on you enough just how valuable that will be. If that's something that yeah. you're interested in at all, I guarantee you, you will get something out of it. But make sure you're ready to do the work um, because he's going to give you some really great advice on uh, on how you can turn your body into a healthier organism. And thanks, Phil, for joining us again. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Always insightful. Right. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Cheers. Guys. Cheers.